Let's take a brief Q&A. Uh, any questions? I'll throw the mic at you. Australian cricket team. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. Um, if there's, we're talking about the, maybe there isn't such a strong connection, you know, for a lot of people, and it, maybe it's subjective. But what about colour blindness? I was wondering if there's, is there any sort of understanding of how colour blindness affects composition, affects understanding of music? I know in graphic design, graphic designers who are colour blind, there's a real conformity in the way the, the palette they choose, you know, because of their blindness. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a very, very good question, actually. I don't know if color blindness in itself has a, a kind of effect to how you would compose, other than that, of course, you would be limited from certain, certain colors from the world, which, of course, affects the whole perception of the world you have. And every single note you write to the paper is somehow connected to all the experiences you have ever had in your life, all the visions and sights you've ever seen. So from that perspective, it actually could affect, but maybe not so directly. I would rather say that, I don't know if it's a comparable, uh, comparable thing, but of course you have color blindness and you have a kind of a, some kind of a sound deepness or in musicality, which of course, you know, it's not really scientifically proven, but uh, completely. But we have very, very different levels of kind of a being able to uh, dif uh, how separate different sounds or different colors. So maybe that kind of connection might be more relevant in this, in, uh, in, in the kind of way if, if you're able to compose or what kind of music you actually end up composing. Do we know if any particular known composers were colorblind? I, I, it's a research thing, I guess. I, I really don't have, have much information about that, but I'm sure there must be some. Interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what is your favorite color in music? My favorite color in the music? I would say all luminous colors. Okay. Anybody else back there? <laughs> So uh, my color concern is about learning itself, like, uh, for example, music itself. Um, I've heard about from a lot of people talking about, for example, that they, when they hear music, maybe the same with you, that they see colors with it, like the thing that we've been talking. But how about like learning music through, for example, true colors? Yes, this is actually something I left out of my presentation because. Um, because that would take a totally new lecture, actually, yeah. <laughs> to talk about that. But yes, there are many uh, teaching methods, uh, I would say, based on, on, on connecting certain type of colors, also based on kind of a hearing certain type of sounds, that actually there, uh, in those techniques and those kind of methods, you really don't even start reading notes, but you start first connecting with the colors with the, with the actual, actual music. So yes, it is used in, 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 in various places as a form of, uh, of learning music, at least. I'm not sure if it's, if it's kind of most efficient way, but it's certainly a very interesting way of, uh, of educating children for music. Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, so do people, um, like what's the name of the man you said was um, uh, Skriabin. Yeah. <laughs> Here he is. Yeah. yeah. So for, for people like Skriabin and other people that uh, have the similar sort of uh, synesthesia, uh, things like being at traffic lights, yeah. in everyday life, does that, does that start to spark off a symphony for <laughs> these people? Well, why not? Why not, actually? Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's not the most inspiring moment of uh, connecting colors to your musical innovation, but yeah. I actually know there's a composer who wrote an opera starting with car beeps, you know, and, and so on. So maybe he got inspiration from the traffic lights as well. But yeah, I mean, um, like I s slightly referred to in, in, the, in the presentation is that um, this kind of a, 
how would say, context of everything and, 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 and the context of everything we see and experience to our, our past and, and, and past experiences, of course, is very essential in, in how we see different colors and what the kind of inspiration they give to us. For example, I mean, uh, when we talk about Sibelius music, and essentially the actual music itself, if we just take the sound, it doesn't really give us any colors, but somehow still many people, especially the people outside of Finland, somehow picture themselves to a certain kind of Finnish forestry landscape mm -hmm. or lakeside landscape and see them in colors. So I'm, yes, this is exactly kind of a similar example. You see traffic lights with certain color and they might give you uh, some reminiscence of certain type of music as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know that that fireplace at Sibelius' place was... Uh, that's, that, that fireplace at Sibelius' is that's where he, he burnt his unfinished... Yeah, exactly. That's where he thing, burnt he? the yeah. eighth, eighth Symphony, of which we only have some fragments yeah. fragments left. Yeah. But they've, they've re-put it together, haven't they? Yeah, I think it does. Very yeah. good point. Fascinating, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I actually just wanted to add to what you were saying. I was thinking it was interesting that you mentioned that it's, so, uh, it's about intuition and that you can't really nail it down like about colors and, and they're associated with anything. And I was thinking that the only way that we have to suffer from the world of words, uh, I'm a poet actually, and I was wondering the only way that we really have to like do that is through words. So when I think of blue, I think of like a blue jay, I'm from Canada. Yeah. So then I think of other things, so I associate everything with words and then things start to spark off these, uh, you know, basically endless uh, images yeah. or endless feelings because I think words are as music is directed to feeling and then so feeling would be given a word or a color like the blues exactly. or or yellow like then I think of the sun exactly and then it just it trickles down to so many different things which for me opens up a world of experience so I think it's just interesting that you have left it so open and I think it's yeah. really great that you have talked about it as like a Basically, that it's open for everyone's interpretation, which is so lovely about music, that it's everyone has a different feeling about it, therefore everyone has a different interpretation of the color that they exactly. see, and through that color, they also have another word that, you know, the sky is blue, and then it goes on and on and on and on, so that people have their own world in music, and I think it's great. I think yeah. it's cool that you didn't take a whole, like, really kind of, most, most lectures, I think, will take, like, a, a very narrow lane down this one, and I was really excited that you have kind of left it really broad, and that's really cool. Yeah, well, I mean, this somehow sums up very well in this this one I just showed you. I mean, you know, yeah. it's just you know there are just totally different opinions about the fact that you showed that. I was I thought like that's great, you know, because <laughs> that's totally what it is for me anyway. Yeah, like, and exa I think it's exactly. for everyone the same yeah. thing. They they would never yeah. be able to say like, you know, like the blues is is the color like black, blue, and brown. Exactly. Because the blues, when you hear it, sometimes it's like you have this yellow that comes like, exactly you know, in but a moment. Absolutely. And on the contrary, I find it very interesting that you say that for a certain color might inspire you, for example, for certain words that actually just start, start kind of recreating the poem itself. Because this is somehow, for me, very often how the creative process goes. I actually uh, I hear a color or I hear a, a kind of a landscape and then I start seeing it in, as music, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's not that I, uh, that's, that's just something, something very exciting that, and undefinable about the creative process. Right. But also, you know, I go more into, I, I talk more about, you know, these landscapes and luminosities, which already include the whole world of colors, because I mean, working with just one color is actually too limited f for me. <laughs> You yeah, know, there are there are millions or billions of colors, and, and you know, just defining it. Okay, we have this red and blue. It's too just narrow-minded for me as well. And the same as uh, I think there's uh, many different variations of sound. Like you said, yeah. like some people have the ability to kind of hear distinct sound, and uh, I think like like just it sounds really crazy, but I know some people who can't stand to be home too long because they can hear the fridge, yeah, and right. they can't keep their iPhone plugged in beside their phone because they can hear their phone charging. Exactly. So I think that it's interesting how like different people have a different, like, imagine the spectrum of sound that that person hears if they can't charge their iPhone beside their bed. Exactly. So yeah. imagine the amount of different colors associated with every yeah, well, I mean, know, piece of music. Start, starting from if you don't, don't have your shades closed, you can't sleep, or you have the, this morning lamp that has a certain color, you know, that wakes you up in, yeah. you know, yeah. Okay. Anybody? 
Yeah. You were saying in the beginning that depending on the weather, today's slight presentation might feel a little different to all of us. When you prepare for a concert, like you prepare for a long time, yeah. do you then feel if you repeat that concert, conducting, depending on the weather that is on that day, you conduct in a different way? Like, can you feel feel it there as well? Or is it more when you create the music? Like No, certainly it, it does have some effect. I mean, you cannot disconnect from the world around yeah. you. and. Uh, of course, it might not be the most kind of a important factor of mm -hmm. how the concert goes because there was a lot of preparation before that and you know that yeah. up to a certain extent <laughs> things will go as planned. Yeah. But I mean, then when we go to this kind of a very, very top, top, top levels of, of uh, uh, refinement, this is where even some kind of a moment of seeing the sun after two weeks of being, you know, I mean, for example, working in the opera, we often work in very, very dark spaces, mm -hmm. so we hardly see the daylight. <laughs> because, I mean, especially in the wintertime, you go to the opera, it's dark, and when you get out of there, it's dark, and you've been dark all the day inside. <laughs> and then if you suddenly just see a kind of a little brick of light and the whole colors of the nature, well, in, you know, in the winter, there are not so much colors, but anyway. Uh, so um, it, it really can give you a very, very big in inspiration for the moment. Would you then say there is a better type of weather to watch an opera? Like, can you in some way say, <laughs> well, it's a sunny day, it, go it, watch it, it, it depends really on the opera. It really depends on the opera. I mean, if you have some really stormy, stormy stuff, you know, why not uh, having a thunderstorm at the same time? Actually, it's, it's particularly in the Savolina Opera Festival, which is yeah. a kind of semi-out air <laughs> performance venue where you have this roof, but it's kind of out air. I mean, well, even this summer I, I was experiencing a few performances of Madame Butterfly, where uh, in the end when, when, when she kills herself, the butterfly kills herself, there is a thunderstorm going on at the same time. So that's kind of uh, inspiring, <laughs> in a way. OK, thanks. So last, last question. Um, I was just wondering if there's a relative consistency with um, synesthesia, people perceiving specific tones or that sort of thing as specific colors. Like, is there a consistency across the spectrum that most people perceive this as red and most people perceive this as blue, or is it really an incredibly individual, like when they have that, is it really individual? Yeah, I think that's a very interesting question. I, I really don't know personally. I'm, myself, I've been. Um, I've been thinking about this color things and, and the connection of, I mean, you said tongues and, and languages, you mean, or, or tones. Uh, tones. Tones, like yeah, tones, exactly. Yeah. Notes. yeah, well, I mean, yeah, there is not very kind of consistent research that I know of, of uh, so far, because, I mean, the number of the composers uh, are, in the end, quite a few. Of course, it's not only composers, it's all the performing artists and also all the other, other fields of art that actually have this kind of connection with synesthesia, but I, it seems to be a very kind of individual uh, phenomenon for, that certain people just have. <laughs> and the others, I, I really can't tell if I'm a synesthetic or not. <laughs> I'm, at least, if I was, I'm not personally very interested about, of, about that. <laughs> you know, for me, like I said, uh, which is not directly answering to your question, but just adding this that you know, having a certain color for a certain note is just too dull, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> <laughs> One more. <laughs> Thank you, Villa. It's, Thank you so much. It's, it's been lovely. Thanks for the great questions.